I start now? Um, it's great to be here. Uh, good evening to everybody out on the, the screens. And um, I'm just going to do some reflections for the week that's in it, the Holy Week. And a good one to start maybe would be this one, Advent 19, 30, 2013, which is, we're all coming from, really. Through December, I made my way to the chapel in the bay, drawn like the Magi. I left my car, walked the dark shoreline without a star. The wind was against me, the ocean was wild When I made the journey for the child Black on black as ebony The clouds and the rocks and the spread of the sea And lonely shadows guiding me narrow path, a town up ahead, a forest of lights and the holy bread, and the deep hunger by which I'm led. All through the winter, I kept on going, while the storms were blowing. Like a moth to the candle flame that burned on the altar to the infant's name. The times were against me, where few now can conceive how anyone can still believe. And black on black. As ebony, the clouds and the rocks and the spread of the sea and only shadow guiding me. The narrow track, the town up ahead, a forest of lights and the holy bread and the deep hunger by which I'm led. All through the sea till Christmas Day I struggled all the way Lured by an instinct and the fear I might fail The little life in the stable tale now light pours upon me here in the spring where under the sun I sing So we're in the spring and uh, we're coming up to um, the big day, the, the greatest day in the year for us, uh, Easter Sunday. But before we get there, we have to go through some, um, some dark times. And uh, most of my reflections will be sung. Uh, one of my favorite songwriters is King David. He used to, um, I'm sure, sing all his psalms with his, his instrument. This one's called Keynotes, and it's uh, based on the, the, three, the three most important things, as Paul pointed out in his, one of the greatest love poems ever written, I think. 
faith, hope, and charity. Uh, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Faith is the oxygen of believing. There is a purpose to everything that keeps the heart beating and makes the soul sing. Hope is the substance of trusting. We all play a meaningful role Forever readjusting These key notes of the soul of sharing channeled by the vein of the soul through the organ of caring that plays a vital role that plays the key role Love is the blood of the soul. That last line, love is the blood of the soul. It, I took it from um, a poem by George Herbert, favorite English poet of mine. One of the best poets ever, I think, myself. He also wrote a, a poem that I often read during Lent. Um, it's called Lent. And I just wrote down a few of the, the lines here. Welcome Lent, who loves not thee, loves not temperance. It's true, we cannot reach Christ's 40 days, yet to reach part of that religious way is better than to rest. We cannot reach our Savior's purity, yet we are bid be holy, even as he, in both, let's do our best. And, um, I take on twin roles in this one. I, I'm old Nick for half of the verse, and then I attempt to, to be more pure in, in spirit. It's called The Three Temptations, and a little head note I wrote over it. What I like about Lent is the offer it affords us of loosening the grip our appetites have on us. And um, it's kind of gone out of fashion to fast and do things like that. But I think it's a great shame, you know, people go on all these regimes for trying to regulate their life, and that was the best one ever. Um, Christ went into the desert to try and break the, uh, the, the hold that the world has on us and all its appetites. And so here you go, three of them, the three temptations. For 
your nourishment Climb the steeple And jump down Show the people God's in town No, I'll not dare Dare my God Just to hear The world applaud And um, when Father Michael asked me to, um, to do this program, uh, these reflections, um, he asked me for a title, and I, off the top of my head I came up with Voyage to Easter. And I did it deliberately because one of my most popular songs, and a song that's played at a lot of funerals and weddings, in fact, my own daughter, Alva, and uh, her man, Ian, Ian Skell, they got married here before Christmas, before the big lockdown, um, when there were 50 allowed into the churches. It was a lovely event. And I must say, it was, it was kind of nicer in some ways than very large weddings that I've been to. Because, But um, one of the reasons I'm singing the song now is because uh, the genesis of the song came after I had been away from the faith myself for many years. I was a man of the 60s and I went off and uh, only came back, I think it was in 81, I decided. I don't know how anybody can live without uh, faith, really. It's what we're here for. And that's what this song is about, really. And that's why it's connected so well with people, you know, and, and is played at funerals as well as uh, weddings. Um, Franklin D. Roosevelt said, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. I am a sailor and you're my first mate. We signed on together coupled our fate hauled up our anchor determined not to fail for the heart's treasures together we set sail with no maps to guide us we steered our own course whether the storms when the winds were gale force sat out the doldrums with patience and hope working together we learned how to cope life is an ocean but love is a boat in troubled waters keeps us afloat 
When we started the voyage, it was just me and you. But now, look around us, we have our own crew. Together we're in this relationship Built with care to last the whole trip Our true destination's not marked on a chart But we're navigating for the shores of the heart is an ocean, love is a boat in troubled waters, keeps us afloat. When we started the voyage, it was just me and you, but now look around us, we have our own. The memory comes back of, uh, I sang that for a lady who sings, or lived not too far from here, Maureen Carter. So with her in memory. Life is an ocean, love is a boat. In troubled waters, it keeps us afloat. When we started the voyage, it was just me and you But now, look around us We have our own crew um, Which leads on to uh, I've got a uh, countless letters from all over the world about that song, but one stands out. It was from a, a young man from Chicago. He lives in Chicago. And he got wind that his mother was dying back in, in Ireland, back in Dublin, in a hospice. And he rushed home, sang that song to her, The Voyage, uh, and sang it a few days later at her funeral in Mayo, where she was from. And uh, after the burial, at the meal for the family and relations and friends, he got into a big argument with his brother. And it got so intense, they had to be dragged apart. And he swore, he told me in, in the letter, that uh, he went to his bed that night thinking that he'd never patch things up with his brother, because he was heading back to Chicago the, the next day. And um, then a strange thing happened. He, his cousin arrived at his, wherever he was staying and brought a copy of uh, an album of mine called The Voyage. And um, there's a song on it called In Our Father's Name. And he asked him to listen very carefully to the words of that song, uh, which he did. And he told me on the strength of the song, it, it, I'll just give you an idea, in the long shadow of our family tree, that darkened once the heart in me, I found good reason to believe in our frail seed. And in our children's eyes, I watch it grow as I watched it once in the early glow of my brother's and sister's eyes before our broken ties. And you have all these um, fractious moments in family life. The, the chorus then goes, our roots are deep in sorrow and will hurt as much tomorrow if we don't try to end the blame and restore peace in our Father's name. And as I say, on the strength of that, he went back to his brother and patched things up before he headed back. So, At the end of his letter, there was a PS. He said, if you don't mind me asking, who was the father? Was it our dad or was it God? And I think I wrote back to him and said, it was a bit of both. The 
the long shadow of our family tree. Oh, the darkened once the heart in me. I found good reason to believe in our frail seed. And in our children's eyes, I watch it grow. As I watched it once in the early glow of my brother's and sister's eyes before our broken ties. Our roots run deep in sorrow and will hurt as much tomorrow. We don't try to end the blame Restore peace in our Father's name. another verse but uh, you can look it up yourself anytime online I think there's a version of it up on YouTube and um, there's another tree in this one actually there's a... I'm going to recite this one I, I wrote this last year for the um, the growing pandemic that was happening and I wrote it in memory of Martha Kedgling who traveled with her husband Stig from Bord Bodo in Norway, and he's probably looking in now, so I better get the names right. Uh, in 2018, they came to Ireland to hear me sing a song called The Fallen Tree, which I wrote about a tree that's in the neighboring Barna Woods. Came down one day when I was on my way from my walk down to Silver Strand. I usually come through the, the Barna Woods. And um, when I recorded the song, she heard it online somewhere and she fell in love with the song so much so that she came to Galway to hear me sing it in the town hall and to go and visit the tree strangely enough and uh, I did two two shows in the town hall smaller theater very intimate very nice and um, she booked both of them for herself and her husband uh, but she was unable to attend the second because she suffered from respiratory uh, illness and uh, respiratory illness and she, she became ill the, and, and the second day she was here and she died in, um, from the illness last year in June June the 3rd it was 2020 and this offshoot that I'm going to recite actually is um, was taken came from that and uh, I'd like to dedicate it to her and her children, Daniel and Jonas, and their stepfather, Stig, and all the others who have uh, lost relatives and friends and family members uh, during this pandemic. As I say, I call it Reconnaissance at 70, or for all of our fallen. Though my ears aren't what they used to be, I still hear bird song as a wake-up call like Reveille, when I stroll after dawn through the army of trees in Barna Woods in springtime. And though my sight isn't as sharp as it once was, I often inspect the uniform green of the mossy battalions and raise my eyes for the filtering light shining through the helmets of lime-colored leaves in these April fresh mornings. But though I enjoy this reconnaissance, more and more now as I shuffle along the ranks on ranks of sturdy stormtroopers that made it through the last onslaughts of winter, part of my drill has become to gaze downwards at the recently toppled and sigh for their ending. Ah, uh, if I were a carpenter or a woodcarver, 
I would reach for my saw and my chisel and fashion this sorry prone timber into an erect cross, scored with a heart, and set it where fresh shoots are already sprouting in commemoration for all of our fallen. And uh, it's an appropriate one to, um, just before my final song, which, and I'd like to preface it with a, a very short piece called Rose. I opened with a song about going to early mass and uh, I used to go into the St. Mary's in the Clada and uh, I don't know if you, if you know the, uh, the grotto there, there's a statue of Our Lady up in the rocks and I wrote this piece after, you know, we'd stop off there to say a prayer before going into very early mass. I'm an early bird and this one is called Rose. The lopped bushes crowned with thorns seemed as dead all winter as the plaster image of the mother on the rocks overlooking the deathbed we prayed to in the grotto till Easter through spring for the miraculous risen thing that rose. And uh, I wrote this song very recently with an old melody. It's called Magdalene at the Tomb. And um, it's been nice reflecting here in the church. It would have been nice with an audience, but uh, that can't be, unfortunately. So um, it just, it's called Magdalene at the Tomb. The sun is up, it's break of day, the stone is moved, rolled away, and stepping in the vacant cave, Magdalene is growing afraid the tomb is empty nobody there the carp's gone but where a voice like an angel seems to sing the man is risen, Magdalene. repeats feather soft nectar sweet and Magdalene now feels enticed to leave the tomb and search for Christ the sun up and this living ray has overcome death and decay and stepping from the empty cave Magdalene is growing brave
it's all before us. So, happy Easter to you. Okay, with it.